First Corinthians chapter 13. Well, singing has been amazing the last couple of three weeks. Uh, it's gotten really great again. We're grateful for that. Something special about God's people being together and just lifting their voices and their hearts together to God and honoring Him, praising Him, and then speaking to each other in the words of the songs, it, it really is a gift. Today we're going to talk about love. When we hear that word love, what comes to our minds? A whole lot of things, doesn't it? I love chocolate cake. Anybody believe that? Anybody agree with me? I love my dog Moses. Anybody have a dog you love? I love the money that's in my pocket. Anybody relate to that? Come on, folks. Okay. I love the flowers in my garden. I love my great Aunt Fern. You know Aunt Fern? The one that smells like an Estee Lauder perfume salon? I love Aunt Fern. I love a good steak. I love, I love, I love. And we use that word very, very freely, don't we? To describe all kinds of things in our lives. We use it in the context of family. I love my wife, I love my husband, I love my children, and we even use it to say, I love the Lord. And so when we hear that word love, what comes to our minds? I love chocolate cake, and I love Jesus. Is it the same thing? No, but we use the same word, don't we? We use the same word. Some passages that I want us to discuss and look at this morning. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then 1 Corinthians 13. Let's begin reading here verse 1. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels... But have not love. I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, and then I shall know fully, even as I've been fully known. So now, faith, hope, And love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Pretty amazing, isn't it? And we read the words of Paul and then we're reminded of the words of Jesus to you and I. A new commandment I give you that you love one another 
as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Faith, hope, love, abide. These three, the greatest of these is love. A new commandment I give you. You love one another as I have loved you. This is how the world will know you're mine. If you have love one for another. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I love chocolate cake. One and the same thing? I love my dog. One and the same thing? I love my house. One and the same thing? I love football. One and the same thing? Uh Uh-uh. Not at all. When we talk about love, what are we talking about? I want us to focus in on God's Word this morning. Typically, when you and I think of love, we think in terms of our feelings, our emotions. I love you, you love me. Remember Barney? I love you, you love me. We're all one big family, you know. What was he singing about? How I feel towards you and how you feel towards me. And basically, Barney was saying, I like you and you like me. And because we like each other, we can be friends. But when we talk about love according to scriptures, are we talking about our feelings? Now, in the New Testament... There is a love that is talked about, a love that is where we get our name for our city, Philadelphia, in our country, from the Greek language, philio, a brotherly love, a brotherly affection. And in Hebrews 13, Paul says that we are to love one another with brotherly affection. Romans chapter 12, Paul says, show brotherly affection to each other. That is one of the words for love that is used in the New Testament. Two words used there. Brotherly love, brotherly affection, and then the word we're going to talk about this morning, agape. But brotherly affection, the feeling kind of love, follows this other kind of love. And when God commands us to specifically love one another... He uses a word that transcends our feelings. And that's the word agape. John 3. God so agape the world that he gave his only begotten son. The word there is not the love for affection. It is the love that is commanded of you and I. It's the love that God had for us. God willed to love us. He willed the best for us. In his mind, he said, this is what is needed. This is what I do. This is how you define love. And it really has nothing to do with the heart, with the feelings. Now, feelings will follow that kind of love, but God, when he looked at us and he saw our sinfulness and he said, I love you, therefore I'm sending my son, didn't have anything to do with his feelings because if, his, if it was on his feelings, we would have received what from God? Eternal damnation. But God moved beyond his anger, beyond his wrath, beyond his feelings and said, I choose to do for you what is the very, very best thing for you. That's the love there in John 3.16. In 1 Corinthians 13... The same word agape is used. 
Agape is patient and kind. It is not jealous or boastful. The kind of love we're to have for each other that Jesus commanded in John 13. The Greek word agape, a love that is of the mind, not of the heart. And brothers and sisters, that radically changes the way you and I begin to define and determine the word love in our lives and how we react to each other. Because how many of us, if we really look at ourselves and we think about ourselves, how many of us is our love for each other based on how we feel about each other? And for most of us, that's how we determine our love for each other. How I feel towards you in any given moment. And I know all of you feel 100% ecstatic emotion when you think of me, right? Continually. Constantly, right? No. I remember one time a lady walked out of here on Sunday morning. She looked at me and she said, if I could have got to my purse, I would have pulled my pistol out and shot you this morning. I didn't like what you had to say. Well, okay. I bet at that moment she didn't feel real like and love for me, you think? And I feel 100% ecstatic emotion, good, warm, fuzzy feelings for you all the time, right? Sometimes we'd like to just pinch each other's heads off, wouldn't we? Sometimes we'd just like to look at each other and wish for one minute I could shoot lasers out of my eyes and just boom, annihilate you. And you towards me. Anyone know what I'm saying? Yeah. And do we ever feel that way about our spouse? Oh, no. No, no, no. Sure we do. We ever feel that way about our kids? Now, grandkids, that's another story, right, grandparents? That's another story. But your kids, man. When they get to be this age, he wants to parent me. Anybody relate? And sometimes, (gasps) we're talking about something different than how we feel. And aren't we glad that when God looks at us, his love for us is about an act of the will, not an act of the heart, the feeling, the emotion. Because if it was about the feeling and emotion, how many of us here once, twice, several times a day give our Father reason to look at us and just say, I'd like to pinch your head off? Anybody relate? Yeah. But God said, in spite of all of that, what's best for you is that you get my son. And folks, that's the kind of love God wants us to have for each other. When Jesus said, a new commandment I give you that you love one another as I have loved you, Jesus said, okay, let's let's talk about the old law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's great. You need to do that. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's good. You need to do that. But I'm stepping it up here. So that your love for God and your love for each other comes from the same motivation. And I'm here telling you that your love for each other, you love each other as I have loved you. Get the feeling and emotion out of it and understand relationship in the church is built upon the fact that I want what is best for you, you want what is best for me. And when we have that kind of love then the brotherly love, the feeling and emotion will come. Amen? And that's why we look at each other, and quite honestly, most of us really like each other. Because the commanded love is now more of an emotional response. And it's easy for me to show you brotherly affection because I love you in the way that Jesus loves you. I love you because I want what is good, right, and very best for you. Do you understand what we're saying? 
there's a proper place for an emotional kind of love, there is a greater place, a more appropriate place for this commanded love that leads to the proper emotional love. That's what God is wanting us to understand here. And when we're practicing agape, then chapter 13 here, when it says in verse 4, agape is patient and kind, it's not about how I feel towards you. It's about the fact my patience, my kindness towards you, that is what's good and best for you. Not selfishness, not stinginess, but the love you get from me, the love I get from you, it is patient and kind because that's an act of the will. And that means in every situation, my goal for you, your goal for me, is that we practice patience and kindness. And the only way that can be is if I'm loving you in the way that Jesus loved me. Agape does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Agape bears all things. It goes the distance. It doesn't give up on someone. It keeps right on going until eternity comes or death comes. That's what our love for each other does. And it believes all things. It thinks in terms of, I know this person, I see this person, I see their sinfulness, I see their wickedness, and I understand they see the same in me, but thank goodness we love each other in the way that God loves us. We see in spite of the sin, we see the possibility, we see what can be, we see the salvation that's in our lives, we see the blood of Jesus in our lives, and that's going to make all the difference. And that's why agape hopes all things. Because when I look at you, you look at me, we see all the possibility that God has planned for us. Amen? And because of that, we'll endure all things together. You know, one of the great things about Mickey Elrod, she endured a lot. You know what? I did too. Irma, you ever had to endure Elbert just a little bit? Elbert, did you ever have to endure Irma? Now see, Irma just smiled and chuckled and Elbert said yes. Now that's, that's the difference between a man and a woman, okay? I, I do offer marriage counseling. <laughs> that's the kind of love that makes a marriage work. That's the kind of love that makes brothers and sisters' relationships work. And folks, the amazing thing about this love that's mentioned here, the love that Jesus commanded we have for each other, the love that God has for us, it is the same word agape that is used in Ephesians 5 when Paul talks about the marriage relationship. And he says, husbands, agape your wives, wives, agape your husbands. That's why our marriages work, folks. Even in the highs, the lows, and everything in between because we understand my marriage is not based on how I feel. It's not based on my feelings. It's not based on my emotions. It's based on the fact that I looked at this woman and I said, I choose you above every other woman on the planet. You get my heart, my soul, my mind, my strength. You get everything and it does not matter what comes. I will endure all things. I will bear all things. I will hope all things. I will love you until death do us part. And she does the same right back for me. Now, Jordan and Helen, that's what you did last Saturday when you said, I do, okay? Hold on to that. We talked about it. We want this thing to go 79 years plus, okay? And brothers and sisters, every one of us here. And that's why God's reaction to divorce is so strong. I hate divorce because divorce is based on feeling, not on love. And brothers and sisters, that's why in any marriage when you start having problems, don't wait too late. Get there right at the beginning. 
you have a good blow up tomorrow night and y'all have screamed, hollered, and said things that you didn't mean to each other, and you have a wonderful makeup session, you still call one of the leaders here in the church, you call me, you call somebody and say, I just need you to know, we had a big blow up last night, we've patched up and made up, but I need you to be praying because I don't want this to become my pattern. And that way we put a stop right then at that marriage ever failing. And you're in a failed marriage right now, it's not too late to go back and say to your spouse, God says, I love you, I will love you, I will seek your best, and I'm going to make this thing work. So it's time you and I get on the same page and we go the distance. Amen? Amen. And that's what's going to do it. And then folks in the church, here's what this love means. Ephesians 5, Paul says to you and I, walk in love. Walk in agape. Walk in a solid mindset that says, you're going to get what's best from me, and I'm going to get what's best from you. So that as John would say in 1 John chapter 4, God is love, and we're his people, so we're people of love. And the world needs to look at us and see our love for each other. Folks, the day we went to the water and confessed Jesus, what did Luke tell us in Acts chapter 2 verse 47? And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. That was our marriage ceremony to one another. And that meant the day you and I were baptized, we started thinking of the church in terms of we're hitched. And we've got to make this thing work. And we've got to make it go the distance. Amen? Amen? Amen. But we're so American... We'd rather exercise our right to split the blanket and go on down the road than make some things work. I've always wondered what the Lord thought about church hopping. Now, there may be a day and time come when you and I have to move on, but there's a way to do that. We go to the leaders and say, we've made the decision to leave, and they're shocked because we haven't been talking it. We haven't been gossiping. We haven't been spreading it among the brothers. We ourselves have come to that conclusion. We go to the shepherds and say, it is best for us to go to another congregation. They're shocked. We tell them, let the church know, we love you, we're praying for the best, and you quietly go. Boy, that's been our pattern, hadn't it? We got to talk, we got to gossip, we got to be bitter, we got to be angry, and we got to. No, 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 no. That's our marriage ceremony. We're stuck. We came into a family. I've got three brothers. In terms of like, I won't tell you what the order is. But you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Because there's one down here. Man, it takes every bit of energy possible. But there's not a thing I can do to change the fact that the four of us are Elrod. And so, I love. And the day we went to the water, whose name did we take, brothers and sisters? Jesus, Christian. And in terms of like, not going to go down that road. 
But in terms of love, I love you, you love me. That's what it's about, folks. And it's so important that we grasp this because Jesus said, this is how we will love one another. And it's so significant is that this is how the world is going to know you're my people. Because they see the way that you treat each other. And you give the best to each other. And the world is amazed because out in the world, that's where the cutthroat business goes on. That's where the gossip goes on. That's where the maligning each other goes on. That's where the character assassination goes on. And when that's going on out there, the world can turn and look here and go, wow, look at the difference. And they'll say, these are the people of God. Isn't that amazing? So how is this love going to be seen in our lives? Well, over time, our affection for each other grows and grows and grows. You ever notice how I like to hug? Yeah, okay, good. And I know for some of you brothers, when you first meet me, it's kind of like, ugh, you tolerate it? But after a while, it's like, that's just him. And so you kind of lean into it and you let me hug you. Now, you don't hug back, but that's okay. That's cool. I accept it. But you kind of lean into it and I give you a hug. And it's like, okay, that's done for the week, you know. <laughs> Over time, my affection for you, and I hope your affection for me, has grown. That happens. And we get to the point where we are appropriately affectionate with each other. On occasion, we reach out and take each other's hands when we're going to pray. We're standing together singing, and we put an arm around each other. We pray, and it just, we get down just almost in each other's face on our knees, and we're talking to God. It's seen in the fact that we treat each other with preference to those people out in the world. This is our preference. This is where we build our closest, our most meaningful relationships because we've learned how to love the way Jesus wants us to love. When it comes down to the fact the church is called a meeting and here's the world calling Man, this is where I want to be. And this is my choice. Now on occasion, because of obligation, I have to go and be with the world. But you know where my heart is? You know where your heart is? Man, and as soon as this gathering's over, pew, and I get there, even if it's for the last 15 minutes, because I prefer you, you prefer me. We thrive on being with each other. It, it's seen in just the way we deal with each other. You know, technology has made relationships really interesting. Because we determine our relationships on whether or not... Someone texts me. And if they text me, you mean I've got to text back? Well, no. But if this is what we base our relationships on, it'd be nice on occasion to get a text. It would be, I just got one. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> See, that's what technology does, right? In the middle of your sermon, someone listening to you can respond to you. Now I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> but, but see what that does for all of us? 
if this is how we're going to define relationships, I'm afraid to pick it up now. (laughs) Treating each other kindly over this. And this does define some relationships, doesn't it? And so how are we going to treat each other? How are we going to treat each other just day to day? When I see you, well, she cuts my hair. Can you see the spot back here? Mm -mm. I'll never forgive her for that because I like my hair perfect. So I'll show her. Instead of going every two weeks, I'll go this time in three weeks and make her sweat that week. Yeah? Well, we walk in the foyer, hmm, and we walk right past someone, and they're chasing after us. Hey, Sue, Sue, Sue. Oh, hi. We play games, don't we? No, we don't. Because if there is an issue, people that love... What did God do when there was an issue between us? Here's my son. There's his blood. Now we can be joined together. And let's sit down and let's talk. We treat each other with some common decency. (laughs) That's what we do. And we're aware. We pick up on the fact that when we come in here together, or we call each other on the phone, or we run into each other at the grocery store, Something's not right. We know each other so well that, hey, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. If God believes in telling the truth and he holds honesty is a very, very important thing, how many of us are going to lose our souls over, oh, nothing? And people have to dig it out of us? What's going on? Well, can I ask you what you mean? You seem down. Well, I am. Can I pray? Sure. Will you share with me? Sure. And there's an openness and honesty there and integrity there between us. That's how this love is seen. And folks, this is what we're talking about. And it's time for you and I in the church to get this, to make it a part of our lives. Because we've been so influenced by the world, we forget that love is the significant thing. Faith, hope, love abide But the greatest of these is what? Love. Because this kind of love is the greatest expression of faith we have in our lives. It's the greatest expression of hope we have in our lives. Because this is a game changer. It builds fellowship within the church so that when we gather together here, we can't wait to get here. Because we're being called home to dinner. And when we pass the plates and we're taking the supper, we're thinking about Jesus, but we're also kind of looking around at each other and smiling and nodding. And that nod, that smile says, I'm so grateful to be sitting at the table with you. And when we take the cup, man, we're just so grateful. We're looking at each other with bigger smiles going, look at what brother did for me. And folks, it's time we get this. Because this is a game changer. Amen? It's a game changer for our marriages, for our families, for the church. And it's time that the world look at the church and goes, hey. They stop talking about how the church is full of hypocrites because all they can see is our love for each other. God's greatest expression of his love is through the cross. 
We can never forget that. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5. God's love for mankind seen through the cross.